Hello YouTube and welcome to Learning with Natural Hair. I'm Halima, your host of the show, and thank you for joining me once again. So, today is July 10th, 2012, and as you can see, I have some braids in my hair. French braids. And you see all this hair right here? It's not all mine. I put some extensions in my hair. Um, okay. So, I am sick of this cycle that I've been going through of growing and cutting and growing and cutting and not seeing a whole lot of results because I keep cutting off what's growing um, because my hair ends up getting out of um, precision <laughs> with the way that either it's breaking um, from me not being careful enough or whatever the source of the breakage is or the unevenness and then I go and get it clipped again, and yeah, it's not a fun cycle. Obviously, by the grace of God, I have gained some or retained some length since, you know, when I first went natural, but um, I look at some people's results after six months or a year, and I'm like, what if I just didn't cut my hair? I could be further along now. So, what um, I have known about my hair from past experience is that when it's braided, it grows because I guess it's low manipulation. Um, I don't have to comb it all the time, brush it all the time. And one um, time in high school, I kept my hair braided for like two and a half years. Was it, wait, yeah, about, well, about two years, not two and a half, about two years straight. Um, of course, not the same braids. I would take them out and do something, do a different style. But that's what my hair grew like the most since my older years. Um, and maybe it was the longest that it had ever been, possibly, um, as far as, you know, all of it goes. But I want to see the result of the work that I'm putting into my hair because um, I've done things to try to, you know, moisturize my hair and try to cause my hair to grow, and it does grow, but you know, it doesn't grow evenly or I end up cutting it or something. And I, yeah, I want to break that cycle. So let's see how long I can go with wearing some braids. Um, and the important thing when wearing braids is to keep your hair moisturized. But aside from that, an important thing in keeping your hair moisturized is what you moisturize it with. Because I've learned um, in that two years that I was that I previously mentioned I was keeping my hair braided. If you use the wrong moisturizer, that stuff can glue up not glue up but like gunk up your hair so that you get like lint build up especially when you're using single braids that makes it even harder because you have all these little sections with this build up of lint that's like not fun to get out um, and it can cause your hair to break and stuff you leave your braids in for an extended amount of time and use certain products in your hair so um, it's important like with french braids cornrows as some people call them, I call them French braces, we call them growing up, um, it might not be as much of an issue, but once you get to um, the single braid, it becomes more of an issue because you get um, more um, places where that length can build up, and it's not fun, and it's not fun for your hair if your hair is breaking when you're trying to take those things apart. So, I would recommend being careful, um, figuring out what works for your hair. Some braid sprays work, but just because it's a braid spray, all of them might not work. What you should do is maybe um, test on a section of your hair when your hair is braided. If you don't know what works and what doesn't work, maybe separate into section. Treat your hair with sections and don't leave it in too long um, to where the, the effects are hard to reverse, but find out which products is not making your hair build up and continue using that product to moisturize your hair. Of course natural is better. If you can use a natural product you can find that won't gunk up your hair that would be better in the best interest for you and your hair. Uh, for your health and your hair. So what I've been using right now this is something that um, I'm using right now to moisturize my scalp. Um, this is something that I have not been a frequent user of. It's um, kind of new for me. My sister said she used it in my niece's hair. My niece's hair is like down her back. Um, that's not the only thing she uses in her hair, but that's one of the things that she said she would use in her hair. Another thing that I'm using to moisturize my hair is this coconut oil. 
that I found in this convenient bottle with the little, um, this little squirt top. Uh, I found this at a Piggly Wiggly um, for like five dollars ish. Um, and then the other thing that I've been using is this concoction. It's not just stay soft roll. It's some um, some leftover stay soft roll. Uh, not very much. Uh, I'm not sure how much was left in here, but I put some water, some jojoba oil, and some olive oil in here, um, and I've also used that to moisturize my scalp. And so my scalp, however, in these braids, um, the hair that I'm using right now, I don't know if my scalp is allergic to it. I know that my scalp gets itchy. It's been like really itchy, and then I get these bumps, um, and that's not fun. So. I don't know um, if the hair is causing it, which I kind of think it is, um, but I've been getting these bumps in my hair. Not fun, not fun. Um, but this hair is the 100% Kankakelon, or however you pronounce that word. Kankakelon, Kikikaka. <laughs> however you say that word, that's what it is. K A N K E L O N. I can spell it for you. Kankakelon? I don't know. But anyway, I think you've seen it if you know something about, if you know a lot about synthetic hair. Um, but for whatever reason, my, my scalp has been like itchy, itchy, like crazy itchy, and like bumps and stuff, so that's not good. Um, so I guess a smart thing would do to be to try a different synthetic fiber, which I do. I did buy some hair um, the other day because I was thinking about doing the crochet, crocheting the um, loose hair in. And if I do that, then hopefully I'll be able to get you a video and show you the end result of that. But I was thinking about uh, rebraiding these back braids because what I did was just made three straight rows down. I thought about rebraiding some of the ones in the back, but leaving the middle braid going straight down and making the ones in the back come in this way so that the hair would fall at a more natural falling hair pattern. Um, and so I was thinking about crocheting in some hair, you know, just the straight hair. I did it before, and I looked on YouTube and I actually saw this lady doing it to her daughter's hair. And what she did, which was a good idea that I didn't do when I did this, um, was that when she crocheted the hair, she tied it three times, or she looped it back through three times before she actually pulled it on through um, to make the final knot. And so, I think, um, if I do do the crochet, which I probably will, you know, this hair is making, this fiber is making my hair itch, which isn't the smartest thing to, to do, um, I think I will use that method of, of re-looping it, because when you don't loop it enough, you only loop it one time, or at least when I did it, I didn't take, you know, a whole lot of time with it either. But the hair is more easy, more easy to come out when you don't um, secure it tightly enough. And so that's my video on what I'm working with right now, these braids. And if you have any questions or good comments, please rate and comment. And I'll also ask you to subscribe to Learning with Natural Hair and continue learning with me on this journey of learning with natural hair. Um, continue to watch my videos for future updates and what's going on with my hair and hopefully I will be seeing some length. So thanks for watching me and spending this time and I hope you come back soon. Bye.